Hey guys, welcome back to another Sunday special. Very excited for today's episode because we've got some interesting things to look at. We had a very, very busy week last week with the US dollar gaining a lot of strength. Uh, and we are going to jump right into the charts today. Before I get too far though, let me remind you, please like the video down below. If you want to see these Sunday specials on a regular basis, I will continue to do them on Sundays as long as people are appreciating them. So make sure to like the video down below. Also, any trades that I actually end up taking, I share them inside of the A1 trading community. That is a community that myself and my staff offer uh, for people who are interested in trading and collaborating with other people. You can get more information on that in the description down below. So check that out if you're interested in joining our trading community, trade alongside myself, as well as the rest of our chat room there. So check that out. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into this. So let's start here with down below. I said this last week and people said it was a little bit helpful. So um, down here, you can actually see the markets that I am going to be looking at. So if you don't have a ton of time, you want to skip ahead, you can go ahead and skip ahead to any of these charts. Not as many this week, but uh, we are going to dive into some of these ones and see if we can find some information or interesting setups for this week. So let's take a look. Uh, Euro USD last week had a pretty good break to the downside. Now, if you remember from last week's Sunday special, uh, I actually talked about these, uh, this potential, right, for price to break above or below. And if you watched one of my videos this week, uh, then you saw that I did end up taking a short position and uh, made some some nice money on this uh, consolidation zone breaking to the downside. So um, <clears throat> we can actually see that once this level here got broken, as we had talked about, we really saw the the bulls uh, get weak here and the bears kind of take over and push this market lower. Now the question becomes, what's going to be next for EURUSD? Now that we've broken to the downside and shown some strength for the bears for the time being, uh, I think we have to look at the daily chart to see where things could actually end up going. And for that, uh, let's take a look here at this level here. And this is the one that I talked about a few, maybe five weeks ago when we first started getting up to these points. I said, if price does start to pull back here, it probably, in my view, wants to come down to test that 1.145 zone. And so that's where I think price has potential to move here on the euro dollar. Now, is it going to go there right away? Maybe, maybe not. We will see uh, how this market starts to open up. It is still Sunday. The markets are not yet open. But if we start opening with more bearish price action, I'd say very good chance we see a run down to that 1.145 level. And by the way, if you hear little noises, it's my cat running around. He's uh, just having fun today. So with that said, uh, Euro USD. So this level here, right? Possible retest going into maybe this week, maybe the next few weeks, but uh, watching for that level. And that's where things get really interesting to me because we have to remember that although this market does seem short term bearish in my view, I still think that long term we are in a bullish uptrend. There's a few things that tell us that. Well, number one, you can see the higher lows here being formed and we're questioning. We're going to see are we going to see a nice higher low somewhere here on euro dollar. And my idea here is that if price comes down to this area for me, this is where it might actually be worth looking to get long. And so what I like about that is if this moving average here, this is the 200 day moving average continues on its upward streak, price could actually line up nicely with that as a potential confluence factor for getting long. OK, and we have that level that I talked about there, that previous resistance level potential support. So personally, I like the idea of taking a trade on this level. I'm not encouraging you to take a trade or anything like that. I'm just sharing my own personal opinion. Now, again, if I end up do taking any trades, they will be shared inside of the A1 trading group so that other people can see my analysis and reasoning for that uh, in real time. So that is my top setup there for euro dollar. Let's move on to pound dollar uh, and see what we can find here. So pound dollar also had a very, very bearish week. In fact, uh, more so bearish even than euro USD, right? If we look at euro dollar uh, compared to the pound dollar, we really saw the pound dollar get much more bearish much sooner. And so with that said, uh, we kind of had the breakdown of this upward trend. And then now we sort of have this new strong downtrend that seems to want to have a, a, a nice run here. Now, I want to say something, though, because there is a key thing difference uh, about this this move here. Remember, we are not at the 200 day moving average on euro dollar. But here we are on the 200 daily moving average on the euro dollar. And bam, we are already there. We're all the way down here at the 200 day moving average, which is a big indication of, OK, this thing got bearish very quickly. But the question is, is it time for this thing to bounce? And I think the answer is 
Probably yes. That is uh, my opinion here. Let me see if I can get this. Uh, so we've got this zone here, okay? So what we can see here is based on supply and demand support and resistance concepts, we have levels here, right? Resistance here, resistance here, price broke out through that level. We did get that bullish run, price came down. It did find temporary support here and now has t come back down to retest this zone a little bit more extensively. Now we are officially at that 200 day moving average and that combined with this overall uptrend to me I'd say there's a pretty good chance that we could see some bullishness here now I think also this is kind of interesting right so in this case we have three things now we have this upward trend line right pretty strong buy buy zones here right we got a lot of strength there a lot of strength here and now as we come here the question will be can we get a repeat of history there and see if this trend wants to continue with that said we have another level, which is that 200 day moving average. And we also have this supportive zone that historically has had some sort of significance on the pound dollar. Okay. So those three things to me look like a pretty bullish indication for the pound. So we'll see if that plays out or if, you know, if the pound wants to get long here or, or get strong here, uh, there might be opportunities to get long in my opinion. So let me add to that. So if I was to get long here, let me just share my thoughts. So let's say uh, that considering things look good on the open and we don't gap up or down massively. Uh, let's say I got long right around this area. So my opinion here would be to be buying into this zone, right? And probably putting a stop below structure here at a reasonable place would be somewhere around here. Uh, that's going to be roughly risking, let's see, roughly 260, 270 pips there on the move. That is a little bit bigger, but if you're swing trading, uh, you know, that's not ginormous and then for a potential target let's think about so we do have the previous high that is something we could think about right um, so this zone up here might be an area that I would look for a potential target okay so that overall let's just we're just roughly guesstimating here that's about 700 pips of profit if price were to just continue the uptrend and rally back to the highs okay uh, and then risking again let's say 275 pips roughly so uh, to me, I think that there is some potential there on that that trade. Um, we still we so we have a lot of bullishness on the on the U.S. dollar, which means right we have GBP USD. We have a lot of bullishness on the U.S. dollar, which has been pushing the pound down. So we're keeping that in mind here. Uh, if that continues, um, you know, it definitely could send the pound lower. But I think that with all the money printing, that I would not personally say that the U.S. dollar rally is is going to be massive. I could be wrong about that, uh, but that would just be my first, you know, based on the fundamentals, I don't think it's, uh, you know, massively going to, to go up. But again, we do have election season, so uh, I could be very wrong about that. So we'll see. Um, let's take a look here at gold really quick. So gold also had a move this week, really, really strong move to the downside. Uh, and we broke out of this consolidation zone. So let me just highlight this. So we were basically very, very much back and forth on gold for some time here. Let me just grab this. So we were back and forth, right? Just very, very choppy, really not decisive for about a month and a half there on gold. Uh, so now when we did finally break to the downside, uh, the big thing here now is I think if we break this level, right, where we are currently at, we had a lot of buy support uh, previously. So price came down uh, and found a lot of support, a lot of buyers in this area down at that 1860, 1870 zone previously. So now we have stopped here for the end of the week last week uh, around the same spot saying, hey, you know, is this going to hold? Not too sure. We'll see what, you know, the next catalyst brings. If there's something else that is bullish for the US dollar, I'd say that there's a very good chance, uh, in my view, that gold heads down to that 200 day moving average. That would be my opinion of where price could go. From there, you guys may have heard me say it in the past, but I like the idea of buying this 200 day uh, retest. So that to me, just like we talked about on the Euro dollar, I like the idea of that long-term uptrend and trying to get involved at a decent pullback. So this area of value to me being that 200 day SMA, okay? So that for me might present some trading opportunities. And again, if I take any, I will share them with members. So keep a look on that for those of you guys who are inside the A1 trading community. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on gold. There's not a play just yet for me. I might take some intraday shorter stuff or maybe not intraday, but you know, shorter term swings, maybe a few days, uh, see if we can catch some sell side if something sets up in the meantime. Uh, but long term, I still am interested in looking for that bullish opportunity. So 
keeping an eye on that for gold. Let's take a look at the S&P because we did get a rally on Friday. Um, but the overall concept here still remains. I think that uh, price probably wants to make a move back to that 200 day as well on this on this chart because again, uh, the 200 day on the S&P 500, I've talked about this again and again on the channel, uh, a lot of times seems to very much be respected, right? Take a look at all these different historical times where price comes down, retests the zone, uh, and then finds bullish support off of that level. Now, not always, of course, you can see here in all of this pandemic craziness, right? We saw price crash right beneath. So keep an eye on that sort of thing. Um, of course, you know, there could be a, a wave two or a part two to the correction or, or even a potential crash. So you always want to be aware of, uh, in my view, where things are at compared to the 200 day moving average. Generally, I'm viewing a, a market above the 200 day as a bullish market, right? With, with opportunities to look for longs. But once things start to break and change directions for real, uh, you know, I'm not as interested like here in 2018 in trying to be long right away. 2018, I did buy some stocks here on the on the dip. Uh, ended up having to hold on to them when things got uglier. And fortunately, did buy some more stuff. Uh, not at the absolute low, but took some buys on the lows. Now, if you saw my video, I did in fact buy uh, quite a bit of stocks right here, about about uh, fifty thousand dollars worth of stocks. You can watch that video on my channel. Um, those have been doing very well, and so you know I'm I'm not opposed if the market wants to keep going up. But if it comes down, that doesn't mean the end of the world either. And there might be some trading opportunities shorter term. So my long term investments are doing just great, uh, but short term there might be some opportunities to to profit on whatever market direction. The market wants to do New Zealand dollar. Let's take a look here. Um, let's see what things look like on the four hour chart for a moment. You can see we did get a lot of bearishness here again as the US dollar was strong. So that pushes New Zealand, New Zealand up. Uh, sorry, New Zealand down while the US dollar is going up, uh, which caused a really big move to the downside there on Friday. Uh, and so I think the overall uptrend still here remains. Uh, but similar to the rest of our stories, it's very, very possible that we could be due for a more of a retest. This one's going to heavily be impacted by what the U.S. dollar does most likely. So keeping an eye on that uh, for a potential retest there. So those are my favorite setups going into this week. I hope you guys uh, got something out of this video. Again, if you did, make sure to like the video. And if you have not already joined us, come check us out in the A1 Trading Community. Uh, there's a discount code in the description if you made it to the end of the video. Check that out and you'll get $5 off. You can come try out the group and see if it's a fit for you. Thanks so much and have a great week this week.